Do you have a friend who insists you don't need an antivirus, or maybe that friend is you? Today I wanted to briefly discuss this widely debated topic. Do you need an antivirus? If so, what antivirus should you use? Typically this question is referring to Windows, so for this video, let's stick with only talking about antivirus programs for Windows. Let's start with the benefits of using an antivirus. First, if you download a file which has a virus, an antivirus will typically stop the threat. Keep in mind that not all malware is necessarily targeted by antivirus programs. I'll talk about anti-malware later in the video. Second, antiviruses typically scan the websites you visit to protect you from known malicious content. This acts as a prevention mechanism to viruses. Third, if you're infected with a virus, antiviruses will allow you to scan your computer and attempt to remove them. Fourth, lots of antiviruses include a firewall, blocking any unauthorized connections to your computer. Not all programs have this, but a majority do. Windows does have a built-in firewall, but it's recommended to get something better. Lastly, antiviruses will typically offer additional features and settings designed to boost your security. Each product is different, but a lot offer password managers, web plugins, sandbox programs, encryption for your files, and many other neat little features. So looking at everything they do, it seems like a no-brainer. Why would you ever not consider using one? Well, let's go into some of the negatives. First, your computer will slow down. Even if it's brand new, you could see a 10% performance decrease and sometimes even more depending on what software you're using. Second, cost. Lots of the well-reviewed and recommended antivirus softwares will cost you some money. There are, however, stock and free options out there. Third, conflicts and false positives are very frustrating when using an antivirus. Never install more than one program to avoid conflicts between them, and there unfortunately is no way to avoid false positives. Antiviruses will always make mistakes. Fourth, antivirus software has access to very deep parts of your operating system, creating a potential avenue of attack. This is a very real concern, which is why you always keep your software up to date. Fifth, this mostly applies to free services, but it also applies to paid ones as well. There could be some severe privacy invasion going on. All of your files are being scanned, the metadata and file content is reported to the company to improve their detection. AVG's one of the companies who came under a lot of fire for their privacy policy. I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but I think we're going to get a big data leak from an AV company in the coming years. And lastly, antiviruses can give you a false sense of safety. You may want to download a potentially dangerous file assuming your software can protect you against it, but it won't always keep you safe. Alright, so now what are my thoughts on antiviruses? Personally, I'm a huge believer that you, the user, should be your first primary form of protection. If you download files from trusted sites and don't install untrusted programs, you'll probably never see a virus. However, this doesn't mean you shouldn't have a plan B, and this is what I think your antivirus is for. I will never recommend using no antivirus. That's the digital equivalent of pulling out. We're all about safety here at TechLore. Assuming you're an experienced user who understands how to detect if something can be trusted, I recommend sticking with stock Windows Defender. AV Test tested Windows Defender exactly a year ago in April 2017, and their malware detection scored 98.8% on zero-day attacks and 99.9% .9 for recent prevalent malware. Additionally, this was a year ago, and there have have been many improvements since then. So hypothetically, if you're able to avoid 95% of viruses on your own by browsing smartly, and Windows Defender can pick up 99% of that missed 5%, you have a very well-guarded computer for absolutely zero cost and no additional privacy invasion from third parties. However, if you're not tech savvy and you don't trust yourself to be your primary protection, you're that guy who clicks those you are infected ads, then I'd recommend relying more heavily on an antivirus. If this is the case, a paid service is not a bad option. Three well-reviewed services are Bitdefender, ESET, and Kaspersky. You should also pair an antivirus with an anti-malware program, the best one being Malwarebytes. This offers a very good amount of protection. So I hope that cleared up some things about antiviruses, what they do, what they don't do, and whether or not you need one. There really are two people in the world, people who use antiviruses as a secondary form of protection, and people who use it as their primary form of protection. 
The more we promote safe browsing habits, the less reliant we become on antiviruses. So let's make people more aware on techniques to protect themselves before clicking the download button. I am Henry and I hope this video helped you out. Thank you for watching and have a lemuricious day. Killer bees, who beg her to spare you. Heavy, please, but you can't.